Ah, so upon the conclusion of today's St. Patty's Day festivities, we now know who will be competing in one of the two semifinals at the BNP Paribas Indian Wells Open this year. And that semi will be contested between Carlos Alcaraz and Rafael Nadal, the second of a generational battle between these two Spaniards. And let me just say straight off the bat, I am so, so excited for this match on Saturday. I feel there's even more buzz to this second matchup between the two than there was the first in Madrid last year because at that time, Carlos Alcaraz was not ready yet. Didn't help that he sustained a bit of an ab injury early on. Rafa dusted him off on his birthday. I think it was like one and two, something like that. This one, on the other hand, yeah, it's going to be one hell of a spectacle. And if you didn't already know, Carlos Alcaraz is him. He hadn't totally grown into that label yet last May when they faced off, but oh boy. Even if you're taking Carlos Alcaraz of the US Open last year who made the quarterfinals, he has improved leaps and bounds from even where he left off at the end of 2020. That training block he took at the beginning of the year, opting for that and going into the Australian Open cold turkey without any match play prior, oh boy has it paid dividends. Came into the year noticeably bulked up. That seems to have done a lot for his physicality and it was already great being able to overcome, what, two five setters back to back in the US Open to make the quarters. You saw in his title run in Rio where, you know, just add to the laundry list of superlatives, youngest to win a 500 title now. But there, the rain made the schedule so tricky. They were playing every day. He had to play two matches in one day and then the final the next day. That's not normal for an 18 year old. And if you've been paying attention at all over the past six months, you know that this is no normal 18 year old. Clearly, as he now moves to 12 and one on the season, moving on to the first of what will likely be many Masters 1000 semifinals. I've already gushed about Carlos Alcaraz and what I love about his game, how I feel there's like no holes in it. Link down in the description for my video on Alcaraz in the winter. But all those strengths I talked about, they seemed to have gotten even better, sizably better in 2022, early on. I think maybe the newest revelation for me at least might be that this kid has the best drop shot on tour. The shot is damn near automatic. And not only does he make them, but he makes them with such frequency and they are cold winners. Just so many ways that this guy can beat you. Hell, the one match that he lost this year to Berrettini in the fifth, down under in Australia, it felt like the only reason he lost was because he fell in love with ball bashing for about a set and a half and fell too far behind. Picked up the pieces after falling behind two sets to love, but it was just a smidge too little too late. And that was a pattern, but, and clearly he's learned from that loss. He's gotten much better at being patient with his shot selection. I just cannot say enough. And what I've seen this week in Indian Wells, that first set he played against Roberto Bautista Agut, 15 winners, two on force. Like, are you kidding me? To render RBA helpless like that on a court as slow as Indian Wells is just nuts. And he did the same thing to Mofis, who was coming off only his second ever win over a world number one, put in a terrific display against Daniil Medvedev. And by early second set, Mofis was pressing against Carlos Alcaraz. It kind of felt like he was at the point of his like, what else can I really do? What more can I throw at him? Because he really did throw the kitchen sink at Alcaraz in the first set just to keep that set close. Alcaraz had many more chances than Mofis to break that set open earlier. And then you get to tonight. Cam Nori played about as well as he could against a lot of people today in the way that Alcaraz was zoning at times in this match. It would have been a blowout, runaway, like two and two type match. It's really a credit to Nori that he kept this within a break in each set. And some of these gets, man. Like, Carlos Alcaraz, I 
have few doubts saying this now. He's probably the fastest player in tennis right now. With Nadal, Djokovic, Mofis all slower now than they used to be, I have no qualms saying that at all. The defense he was playing in some of these points today just went crazy. And as impressed as I have been with Alcaraz this week, the other half of that is my boy Rafael Nadal. For most of this tournament, he has been very subpar, to put it lightly. He should have gone out in his opener, but Nadal being who he is, of course combined with some help from Sebi Corda along the way, found his way back into that match. I'd say he probably played his best match of the week against Opelka. Returned Riley serve remarkably well, all things considered. First set was about as good as it gets, second set tailed off quite a bit. And then today against Nick Kyrgios, I definitely don't think that this match matched the last three matches of the nadal Kyrgios rivalry. That's probably the best sample for recent meetings with Acapulco 2019, Wimbledon 2019, and then the Aussie Open in 2020. Certainly a fun rivalry, and this one had its moments of entertainment. Rafa really stole the first set being far from his best for much of it, and still I would say that was probably the best it got throughout. That was probably the best set of tennis the two played. Quite patchy after that. High double fault numbers been a theme of this week. I believe Rafa set a career high in best of three against Korda in his first match. And you know, they've come in bunches. I kind of felt that lull of a service game coming in the second set. Really felt the only way Rafa was going to pull away from Kyrgios in the second would be if he got the early break and he didn't. From 3-4 where Nadal was essentially serving to stay in the set for the next three games, I felt there was going to be a lull and sure enough it came. Both players with their chances to break early in the decider. Rafa ended up taking his later. Pretty much just rode that to victory. But speaking of the double false, that has been tied into Nadal's foot potentially not behaving this week. And here's what I'll say about that. As long as Rafael Nadal is out there on court, I don't really think that this should be used as an excuse for him losing potentially. Obviously, knock on wood, that doesn't happen. We're 19-0 this year. Let's keep that going into clay. But anyways, I say we can't really use that as an excuse, not because I don't believe the injury. I know that's there. Anyone who read Rafa's book knows that he's been dealing with this foot issue, a tarsal scaphoid abnormality, ever since he was a teenager. Obviously, it's been managed over the years. You've seen it flare up here and there. I remember Wimbledon 2011, one year against Delpo, he had problems with it. Until last year, that's really the only time I remember it giving him a lot of discomfort. I know the knees have overshadowed that ever since, pretty much. So it is easy to get caught up and say, oh, he's just providing himself an excuse if he loses. And I've seen plenty of that on social media. And to that, I'll say, y'all need to stop. This congenital foot issue has been long documented. And at the moment, that's really the only reason why I say we can't really use it as an excuse. Because I feel like ever since last year, this is just something that Rafa is going to have to deal with probably the rest of his career with varying degrees of discomfort. I mean, he said it himself. There's certain days where it feels good, certain days not so much. And it stands to reason that that's happening more and more as he's getting older. I'm not denying that that hasn't been an issue this week. It most definitely has. He's shaken it out a couple times during matches. Against Opelka, he even took off that one left shoe to massage it a bit. And honestly, between last year's clay court season and now, the mass double faulting for his standards does seem to be correlated a bit with the foot issues. But that being said, he's still out there on court. If it was bad enough, they definitely would have pulled out by now, his team and him. Clay coming up, so you just have to trust. It can't be cripplingly bad right now. And on top of that, the signs of movement, he's moving great. But all things considered, the form just has not been very sharp this week. And well, against Carlos Alcaraz, I think it's going to require a dramatic raise in level out of Rafa. 
the only way he can really get away with this level again against Alcaraz is if Carlos ends up tightening up playing his idol again and having played him already I don't anticipate that happening again and you know Rafael Nadal being who he is we can't put it past him to well be able to take his level up several notches he certainly could rise to the occasion we're not that far removed from the back end of the Australian Open and Acapulco where he did have that type of level and honestly that's exactly what I'm banking on. I know the way I've been building up this video, it was for me to end up picking an upset, and honestly, I probably would have because there's a lot of things in my brain that do tell me to lean Alcaraz's way. But I don't know, right now it just feels like one of those seasons for Nadal where even when you don't have your best, things tend to break your way. It's already happened several times this year. Add on to that, I think that this rivalry still does have the capability for Nadal to really get the upper hand on forehand to backhand exchanges and just keep bludgeoning the backhand. I do think Alcaraz has an excellent backhand, but I do still think that the lefty cross court forehand of Rafa's can still get the upper hand there. Get the ball up high to the Alcaraz backhand in the way that Nori, for example, tonight just couldn't. Mentioned it before, obviously with the season he's having, the confidence is there, the aura is there in spades. Add on to that, this is probably Nadal's last hardcourt, not probably, definitely Nadal's last hardcourt tournament before late summer. Two more matches to go, I think he'll push the pedal to the metal to try and carry this streak into clay season. Keep it going and get out of here with another title. That is a factor that I think I underestimated going into the Australian Open this year. I did have it in the back of my mind that I was like, this is probably Rafa's last chance to get the Aussie Open. And I think as a result, he's going to just lay everything he's got out on the line, regardless of how hard he had to work all tournament. It's exactly what ended up happening. Stakes aren't nearly as high here, but of course, either way, it's going to be a statement win, whoever comes out on top. I do expect it to be tight one way or the other. I think it'll be a tough three setter. Carlos Alcaraz is that dude. It just keeps being reaffirmed week after week. He has it all. After Rio, I proclaimed that Carlos Alcaraz would be top 10 by September. And hey, I might have undersold him on that because he will be making his top 15 debut only one day older than his idol Rafael Nadal did back in 2005. The rise this year has been so rapid that we're closer to Carlos Alcaraz being at the top elite echelon of the game than we are to saying Carlos Alcaraz is the future. He is very much coming on right now before our very eyes. And I am expecting a great semi-final out of this matchup. I don't rule out an Alcaraz win and if it happens, uh, it's not a changing of the guard certainly. But seeing this generational battle again, this time on much more even footing, is going to be a hell of a time. As open as I am to the possibility of an Alcaraz win here, I'm still going to have to roll with Rafa in three, and it should be a good one. But that'll do it for this video. Thank you all for watching, those of you who made it this far. If you enjoyed the video, it would be much appreciated if you could drop a like, help the video perform better in YouTube's algorithm. Thank you all again for watching, and of course, I will see you all in the next one.